if you're called, the people will know. Amen. You don't have to tell nobody. The works will prove for themselves. So I'm honored to be here. And I am honored that those who came with me have come. Brother Chuck, <laughs> amen. Good to see you, sir. Can you turn with me in your Bibles to the book of First Kings, of the 18th chapter? Mm. My God. Glory to God. Mm. The 18th chapter of the book of First Kings. We will read verse 41. Glory to God. I love this instrument. I do. I love this instrument. Those who come with me understand what I'm talking about. Amen. Verse 41 says, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink. For there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. And he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. Amen. And he said, Go again seven times. Come on. And it came to pass at the seventh time he says, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like of a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare mm, thy chariot, and set thee down, get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. There was a great rain and Ahab rode, went to Jezreel. Yes, and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. And he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. I use for a topic to this morning. Life. What Life. do you say? Mm. Oh Put somebody and ask them, what do you see? What do you see? What do you see? Let's put emphasis on the word you. What do you see? Come ask them that. What do you see? You're not working with me. You're not ready for this. Come touch somebody and ask them, what do you see? Sounds like we're ready to have church. Man. What do you see? Whenever God gives a vision to a visionary, the next thing that God does, he never leaves himself without a witness. So what he does, he always brings people into the life of the visionary to help him to carry out the vision. And the purpose for that is because the visionary is very strategic in the plan of God. And it doesn't matter how simple are how laid back that we think the visionary is. If God gives him a vision, yes. God is going to finance it Jesus. and he's going to furnish it. Come on, come on. And not only finance it and furnish it, but if God gives you a word, you cannot die mm. unless the word is fulfilled. Come on. 
Abraham believed that even if Isaac died, God would have to raise him from the dead Hallelujah. to fulfill his word. That's yes, why the Bible says in the book of Numbers, God who cannot lie. Mm. And because he cannot lie, he stand behind every oh, word yeah, that he says. But many times in the lives of people, we hear something in our soulish man and we say it is God. And so when we run with what we hear and because it wasn't God, it fell through. And when it fell through, we said we didn't hear from God. We should have known that before we run. I know you nobody said that. And so when God gives the vision to a visionary, what God does, he makes sure makes uh, not only that he equips him, but God also make it possible that the visionary walk into the vision. Watch God. When God created Adam, before God created the man, he created the environment. So when Adam was created because he was not born, and the only reason why he died was because of sin, which was universal sin. But Adam was created, and when he came into the garden, everything was was already dear. Adam didn't have to ask no question. He didn't have to say, God, what should I name this animal? As a matter of fact, it was Adam who gave names to the animals. Why? Because every potential that God has and the wisdom that God has, he put it in the first man. I don't hear nobody say anything to me. So by the time he gets into the garden of Eden, everything was already dear. He didn't have to search for anything. He was not born, so he was not created to die. He was created as one whole man. He was like God in the earth. The Bible says, God says to him, have dominion. How could he have named the animals and the birds? How could he have dominion if he was not where they were? So wherever he was, he had dominion. He had nobody to answer to but God. He had nobody to talk to but God. He had no father but God. He never knew what a mother looked like. But he had all the attributes of God. Because when he spoke, it was like God in the earth was talking. But what God does is give a man something to do by the time he was created. Ah, the garden was already there. So God gave him specific instructions. Instructions, and so it is today that when God gives the vision to the visionary, you have got to be careful who you drop beside you because there are some folks they do not understand the vision, so they are not able to run. I don't hear nobody seen any. Uh, sometimes we have church as usual, but we need to have church unusual. Because if we do not have church unusual, what would happen is that there would be all sorts of confusion in the house of God. And somebody has to take the initiative to rightly divide the word of truth. And not every decision the visionary make is going to suit him. But he was not called to please you. He was called to please him. But in pleasing him, we have got to displease somebody. I don't know nobody talking to me. So you have got to understand that when God set his shield upon one man, or God set his shield upon a prophet, God said to Israel, if there is a prophet in Israel, I will speak to him face to face, but Moses is my servant, and I speak to him face to face. I do not care how you see your man of God, he's the one who's anointed and appointed, he's the one who has been sent apart from the glory of God. And if you do not join yourself to the visionary, because the truth is, if you are not in obedience, you're in rebellion. I don't hear nobody saying anything. 
Yes, sir. God gave the vision to the visionary. Yes, sir. Yes. And then he brings people into the vision yes. to help the visionary. Yes. And that's why Paul speaks of the ministry of helps. Are you listening to me? You have ministry of helps and the ministry of helps. Uh, and that's the reason why I, I'll have to come back because this one day can't do anything. And what happened when Moses was on the mountain with the rod of God in his hand. Lend me a rod, a piece of stick, anything. And he was on the mountain with the rod of God in his hand. As long as the prophet of God held up his hand and he looked down into it the bias of where the enemy fought with Israel, then Israel prevailed as long as his hand was up. But when his hands was getting weak, then the enemy prevailed. But something happened that we have got to see in the ministry of Elsa. Moses, that Aaron and all saw that the man of God hand was going down and what they did, both of them run and he didn't have to call them but they were in tune with the visionary, they were in tune with the vision, they were saying the same thing, they were walking the same walk, they were talking the same, I don't hear nobody talking back to me over here, they were walking the same walk, they were talking the same walk, wherever the visionary go, the vision go, Wherever the vision and we go, the vision go. And then wherever the vision go, the people that God brings to the vision and we go. That's why the Bible says uh, that the, 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 the armor bearer, uh, my God, uh, Jonathan says, uh, do whatever is in thy heart. Because whatever is in thy heart, uh, do it because God is with you. I'm going to follow whatever is in your heart, whatever God has put in the heart of the vision and we and what did they do? Moses didn't ask for help, but they saw. He I walk with the man of God, but he didn't have his heart. I don't hear nobody saying anything. Not, every, not everybody can be joined to the prophet. Because if you join yourself to the prophet and God didn't give you to the prophet, you're going to be in trouble. Because the next thing is going to happen. You're going to start to do something that is erroneous and rebellious. What Moses' hand did when it got weak was went down. But Aaron and her saw and they held up his hand. One on one side and one on the other. What God is saying to this church, you need to give your prophet rest and stop trying to take his anointing. Stop trying to take his law. I know you nobody talking back to me. Look at some of them that are shut up. Anything. God said it's better. 
prophet in Israel. I will make myself known to him. But Moses is my servant. You must learn to give him rest without trying to take his anointing. Without trying to take his authority. Give the man of God rest. That's the purpose. Everybody wants to be the church. servant unless God called you to him you're gonna be in trouble I don't hear nobody saying anything the armor here has said everything that is in your heart do it because I am with you what God is looking for is some armor here who will not take the rod but will give him rest there's some armor here who will say man of God I'm praying for you I'm worrying for you I'm carrying with you for you. God got your back. God got your back. God got your back. I'm praying for your man of God. I'm praying for your man of God. Even when Joshua the high priest was in his messed up clothes and they had brought an accusation against him, the Lord said, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Leave him alone. He's my servant. He's my servant. He's anointed, he's appointed, he's called, he's chosen, he didn't choose me, but I chose him, give him some praise of him here. Hello somebody, I preached a message about Joseph, the message was prepositioned for favor. Oh, God has to bring four people into the life of Joseph in order to take him where he was. Are you listening to me? Joseph was free. Joseph was forgotten. Hallelujah. Joseph was forsaken. But he was elevated. I hear you nobody seen anything. And when he was in prison for two years, just to give you a part of that message, for two years he was in prison. He was forgotten. But, 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 but. When one of the men I think it was the baker that had a dream. And Moses said, Don't worry, because fear is gonna put on the cup in your hand. But hear me this morning or this afternoon. But he said, When you come out of the prison, I want you to remind fear that I'm in this prison and I need some help. But you've got to understand that in order for God to elevate you, you've got to humble your first idol. When nobody say anything, you see some of you see the glory, but you don't understand the story. You don't know where God has brought us from. We want to look up to the man of God, but you don't understand the pain and the purpose and the pressure and the problems and the people that you have to walk through. I don't hear nobody say anything. Before you can share in the glory, you have got to have a story. And if your story doesn't fit the glory, then you're not ready to share in the glory. I don't hear nobody say that. Then somebody has said, help me yourself. 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 Then there was somebody that came to us. Help me yourself. I'm the mighty hand of God. Somebody give him a crazy praise. When I was the butler, Pharaoh, I just 
during that time. But I don't have time to go into Potiphar. I don't have time to go into the four different people that God has to send in the life of a prophet. Because every prophet needs a Potiphar. A Potiphar is a transitional man. A man who wasn't even saved. But he understands the word of the Israelite. And he understands the word of Pharaoh. So God has to use him to get to more troops in the presence of Pharaoh. God has to send a butler in the life of Joseph because every man of God is going to need somebody to open some doors. I don't know if anybody said anything. Every man of God needs a baker, somebody to provide something for him. Every man of God needs a fearer, There's somebody who is in high position to elevate him to the next level. And no more shut up. I don't hear nobody talking to him. And so Joseph said, Please remember, when you go to fear, remember me. But he did not remember until fear had a dream. And he said, Who can interpret this dream? Then, 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 when he was in the prison, and there was a man named Joseph, we can interpret the dream and watch what the Bible says. And the Bible says that fear sent for Joseph. The first thing Joseph did, he changed his clothes.
by divine yes. appointment. Yes. Yes. It means that you only join yourself to the prophet of God because you want something out of it. Uh, something that is not going to be profitable for kingdom purposes. Uh, something that's going to profit you own flesh and your own desires. And if he has to continue ask you, what do you see? Then guess what happened? You are not in tune with the vision. Something is a very wrong. So long, but you don't have his heart. So long, but you don't hear his spirit. So long, but you don't understand what his heart. Because when you're connected to somebody, you think like them. You talk like I don't know. I don't hear nobody talking back to them. When you're really connected to somebody. That's why the Bible said we have the mind of Christ. Because we think like Christ. We act like Christ. We belong to Christ. So when you have the heart of the man of God, uh, you can know what's in his heart. Uh, you can know what's in his mind. And before you even say it, and before the man of God even say it, you say, man of God, I know. Because I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I feel you. Of God to the people. The prophet said, Don't let him see my 
my face. Just tell him to go and dip himself. <laughs> but there are some walking with the prophet. But your motive is wrong. And if your motive is wrong, not long from inch. visionary that sees beyond. You see, most of the church only see where you're standing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pastor, we can't do it. But he said, well, the prophet said, go on, tell me what you see. you see here today I say to you look again because when you look again then you will see what the prophet sees you will see what the man of God said oh you said we can't do it but the prophet of God said we can because I heard from God I don't hear nobody say anything with people around you telling you to do surgery because the doctor said uh, you have to do surgery the devil is a liar there is a bomb in Gilead I don't give up on this anything but because you are looking at what you see the Bible says uh, you are not moved by what you see you are not moved by what you feel you are moved by what the word of God says I am what he says I am who he says I am where he says I am. I am what God says I am. When everybody, my God was having heart attack and not getting better. I had an heart attack and I got better by the power of the living God. When everybody was dying, I was living. I don't hear nobody say anything. Whose report shall you believe? Who shall believe? Come on. 
Jesus, wait until it's out of your hands. You can't do anything. You have exhausted everything. Everybody is doing surgery. So you, you have to know. The Bible says himself took our infirmities and carried our sicknesses in his body on the tree that we being dead to sin may live unto righteousness by whose stripes. But do you have the tenacity to believe what the man of God, the, the problem that you have, you listen to too much voice. voices that you mix up and because you're mixed up you can God is speaking but you can't hear because the voice of the flesh the voice of oppression the voice of your next door neighbor the voice of the devil your own voice everybody speaking one time this moment you believe next moment you're not sure moment you said amen yes so be it according to the word next moment prophet it looked like I've got to do the surgery you know because my sister told me that I've got to do it and the devil is a liar I know you know what you've got to know what you believe you've got to know what you see you've got to hold on a friend of mine said hold on to Jesus with you Hold on to Jesus with your two hands. What do you see? Don't tell me what everybody else is seeing. What do you see for the ministry? For your life? For the people around you? For your job? Do you think recession changes God? Do you think God is going to refuse to bloom or blossom because the president says it's okay for two men to marry and two women? Do you think that change anything about God? It doesn't. Do you think in the time of famine that he's going to forget his own? Do you think it doesn't matter how long you think you're suffering? There was a woman that suffered for 12 years, another one for 18 a man for 38 years but the bomb in Gilead found it the question is this morning what do you see Amen. the reason why you can't see it because you're always fighting the man come on come on Amen. the woman of God yes so your vision is distorted, yeah. perplex, complex, all kind of plex. Because instead of you fighting with and for the man of God, you lift yourself higher. Because you're probably more intelligent in the natural. Come on. Or you probably think you can speak more eloquent. Come on. Somebody tried that in the Bible. And God has to silence them. Come on. And cause them to understand. Is one general in the arm. Yes. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But you know what? Before I close. There are some people in the church. You know what I call them? Grown God. Yes. Jesus. I call them drunk. They stand at the door and they tell you who can come in and who can't because you're not seeing anything. Hallelujah. Let me, let me see if I can bring this down to a close and give you some more meat. You see, the visionary sees where he needs to go. Why the rest of the people can only see where they are standing. Yes, sir. Moses said God is going to take you. Listen to me. There are people here today. The Lord just told me. You're trusting God for your healing. 
God says to tell you, do not give up. Do not turn to the Lord. The Lord says, do not go to the arm of flesh. Delete every counsel of the ungodly. You need to see something. You need to see what the man of God sees. Come everybody, put your finger like this. Close your eyes and pitch to yourself, putting your finger on the delete button. Delete every negative from the mind. Look! Everything that you do not want in your life now, just
The Lord said, inside your faith in face in fighting, outside your face in war. But God said, because of your persistent and your faithfulness, He's going to make your enemies your footstool. He's going to reward you. And He's going to elevate you right in the presence of your enemies.
up every morning, I'm going to feel pain from six to nine. So you depend on that. I have believe In the mornings when they get up. No. No. God healed me years ago from migraine headache. And every time the enemy brings a counter attack, I said, stop. No. Because I used to get up every day. And at certain hours, I can't depend upon it to come. But years ago, that changed. Because guess what happened? You stopped. Every disease, every sin, everything has a name. You can stop it with the words of your mouth. The Bible said life and death is in the power of your You think God just put that in there because he's stupid? That's why the question is what do you see? Do you think God just put that in there because he has nothing to do? No. The words of your mouth have put. You can stop it and create life. You can change circumstances by what comes out of your mouth. The second word is independence. So we move from dependent to independence. That where I come is in now. I don't need nobody. I can do it alone. The I factor is a great problem and causes the destruction of Lucifer. I. The word I is right in the center of pride. I heard a preacher this morning on the radio. He said everything that happens in the church and says sin, the first thing people does is call fornication and adultery. But he said, listen, those are outside sin. But he said covetousness is worse. And I preached that at my church. When you sit in your seat and hate your sister that sit beside you and pretend that you love her, what are you calling her? When you feel you can pray better than everybody else and everyone else is below you and you sit and in your heart you're filled with the butchery and filled with defilement of your mind and the, 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 the things that we don't see that secretly eats you out the private malice, the unforgiveness, the strife, the confusion what do you see? Independence. The third word is interdependence. Dependence. Independence. Independence. Interdependent. That means we. You need to get in your vocabulary. That means you and I is going to make the change. The visionary and the poor change is going to make the change. Do what is in your heart, man of God, because we are with you. We are with you. We. That's what we need. Listen to me. That's what we need to make it work. The people have a mind to work. One person is supposed to pull the cart. And everybody sits. What part do I play in my church? What is my responsibility. What is my part? Because if somebody has to do what you were assigned to do, then you are only a spectator and you are not an asset. If somebody else is doing what you 
the future that you have because you're a part of it. You must have a teachable spirit. You must be willing to be taught. You must be a willing worker. be able to think in line with the vision. You must think in line with the visionary. Because the visionary carries is pregnant with the vision. If you run from what God calls you to do,
Thank you.